In this section, we're going to talk about how to improve readability with strategic document design. When you're writing a business document, you want to use the document design that's going to enhance the readability of the message. So there's some techniques you can do to improve readability. The strategic use of white space, you want set your margins typefaces and fonts. Numbered and bullet lists are easier to follow along with and headings for visual impact. So you want to use headings and bullets and I'll show you a quick example of how to do that. So for your notes for this time, let me see if I can make it bigger. Okay, so for your notes, I have made a heading that stands out, and then I used bullets, and I also used, broke it into sections so that it's easily seen, bolded terms. So you want it to be something that is clear and make important headings bolded or larger a larger font so that's just an example you want to make white space work for you this is just empty space on a printed page if you have a page that's crammed with text or graphics or just cluttered and hard to read then you're definitely not going to get your message across so you want to use headings bullets effective margins and I'll go back to uh, my example so as I was doing this I tried to kind of space some so that it I'm using white space so that it's not the information is not so crammed together also create short sentences 20 or fewer words in short paragraphs eight or fewer printed lines to improve readability so you want to kind of break up the information so that it's not just one long or several long paragraphs because you're not going to keep the, the reader's attention margins are going to help set the white space on the tops and bottoms in the left and right and for a business memo, you want to have the margins from one to one and a half inches. And also, the margins are said to be justified when the letter and word spacing are adjusted so that lines are aligned at both left and right margins. And another For this image over here, I have this right justified, and then I have the introduction left justified, so that it, it, it's organized in a way that will be helpful to the reader. If the right margin is unjustified, it's said to be a ragged right. So you definitely want to pay attention to your margins when you're writing them a letter or communicating. Then choose appropriate typefaces for most business messages. You should choose one of these two, serif, sans serif, and then you can see the different types of fonts. I think I use this one the most. I don't like Times New Roman as much anymore. To me it looks too formal. Okay, so font refers to specific style, such as italic or within a typeface family. Font styles are a means of adding emphasis to your words. So boldface, like I showed you earlier, italics and underlining are effective for calling attention. So I typically use the boldface to um, get the attention but italics can be good too and underlining as well you just don't want a, an excessive number of font st styles so for the example that i was showing you 
I'm just basically using bold. I'm not using italics and I'm not underlining because I don't want it to be too much and have too much going on. And readers are generally most comfortable with a 10 to 12 point type for body text. I recommend 12. Of course, my headings were 14. Then you can use numbers and bulleted lists. And that makes it a little bit easier to read. Like it says, breaking up complex information into smaller chunks. And also, don't overuse it. And that's with anything when you're writing. Don't overuse uh, the bullets. Numbered list. If you're talking about a sequence Going in order, step one, step two, step three, you want a numbered list. And then if it's not something that's in order, you can just use bullets. Capitalization, capitalize the initial word of each line, punctuation, add in punctuation only if it's complete sentences. So if you have a bulleted list, Here's an example, and I think I just called a mistake in my list. So it's not a complete sentence. You don't have to use um, periods or punctuation at the end. But this one up here I need to fix because these are not complete sentences, so it shouldn't have a period. So remember, that's important to remember. Use um, put punctuation only if it's a complete sentence. And then this one, this one is something that I learned and I think is very important. Let me go back. Okay, yeah, right here. So when you're doing the bullets, you also want to make your lines consistent. So for them to be parallel. So if you start the first one with the verb, you should start the second one. Let's see if I did that. So here you can see these are parallel. They're all starting with the verb. So that's important, and that's something I'll be looking for, is to make sure that your bulleted lists are parallel. Let's see. All right, and then the final slide, Headings, they're a great way to highlight information. It encourages the writer to group similar material together, and it helps you separate major ideas from details. And let me just show you how I broke this up. So this lesson was on ensuring message clarity. And so I have a number one keeping it short and simple. Number two, dumping trite business phrases. Number three, cutting cliches. Number four, shunning slang and buzzwords. And you can see how these are the main points and I numbered them as well to make it stand out a little bit more. And there's other things that I could do to even make this even better. But just get familiar with using these items we discussed to improve the readability of your document or your business message.